Uh, here we are in the holiday season, uh, coming rapidly upon us. Actually, we're in the middle of it towards the end, but uh, wanted to say hi from Maxwell Clinic and welcome my friend and colleague, Dr. David Hasse, who's agreed to join me on this lovely winter morning. Um, I guess first day of winter, right? Oh, it is. I think it is. I just, just realized that. Um, so we just wanted to talk about stress because uh, the holidays tend to carry with them a lot of extra stress. There's yeah. a lot going on. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've got a lot going on. Yeah, yeah. Every, everybody does. You know, it's, it's mixed with a lot of emotions. It is. And, and we recognize at Maxwell Clinic that stress and inflammation are like the two biggies. It is. Yeah. The, the two biggies when we're going to really help somebody move from a place of unwellness to a place of more max wellness, how do, how do uh, stress is at the top of the list. And so, so many things start coming out now. Yes. Uh, and, and we just know a lot more than we used to about the downstream effects of stress. Uh, it's just so many things about the, the kind of biological cascade waterfall that happens. And it's just, it's not good for us to be under chronic stress. I mean, we, we have to have the ability to deal with stress. And that's why we have certain parts of our, what we call our autonomic nervous system, our flight or fight response, but that's not supposed to be on all the time. And, and the holiday season can tend to turn that on a little bit too much <laughs> if we're not careful. Yeah. Um, so we want to talk a little bit today. Um, in a way, this is this is part two of, of a series because uh, last month, uh, Luann Lavin, who is our one of our nurse practitioners here at Maxwell Clinic, talked a bit about biohacking your way through the holidays. We're going to more focus uh, more just on on stress and how to deal with the stress of the holidays. So, yeah. um, but uh, so, you know, so Mark, where does stress come from? Uh, it can come from a lot of different places. You know, it can come from work, it can come from family, it can come from just situations that we don't expect. Um, I mean, it's a lot of different places. You can name, I'm sure, a few more. <laughs> but well, I, I, but I, I, would, I, would, I would maybe respectfully take a different view on that. Okay. That all stress happens between your ears. Yes, that is true. It's, it's not necessarily the situation that you find yourself in, but how you react to your situation or act towards your situation. Yeah, yeah, and, and I got it kind of offended with the first time somebody told that to me. You know, your stress is all happening between your ears. <laughs> you know, like, you know, you don't know my life. <laughs> you don't know my life, you jerk. <laughs> and so, and that, but, I, but I was, as I started to reflect on it, I was going like, oh, wow, um, that's actually a really empowering thought mm -hmm. that we, that we are literally creating our stress response. Yeah. And, and that if we, if we embrace that idea that it's not everything out there that is the problem, but, but really what's how I respond to it, just as you said, how do I respond to it is, is, is the problem and like is also the solution. The solution right. And so mm -hmm. it's, and I think that just, that's one thing I always loved it. Like, oh, do, do you feel that at home? Like if you're, you're as far as stress, can you just wait for, when you think of all the stress going on, can you just for a moment imagine that that's all happening inside of you and you're the one, your brain is the one that's creating it? It's a challenging thought, isn't it, right? And so, but also it's an incredibly empowering thought because now you have huge capacity uh, by changing your mind, changing your brain, changing your thoughts, changing your beliefs. You know, it, this is huge opportunity. Yeah, and... You know, I think that one of the things that uh, a lot of people have challenges with, including myself, is how do I create space for what I need or the, the things that I can do to have a less stressful holiday season? And there are some things, you know, there, there are things that are out of our control and there, mm -hmm. there, there are things that are in our control during this time. Um, and I think one of the things that, you know, because we're being bombarded with so many things and invitations to this and that, like, okay, well, what, what do I need? What makes sense for me during this time? Knowing yourself, knowing your limits, because sometimes we can definitely overextend ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And, and so just taking some time and planning, planning ahead and say, okay, how do I want this holiday season to go? How would that look for you? Yeah, for me, um, I think that that's a big thing for me. I, I can tend to say yes to too many things. Um, like just last night, I had something that came up that was a possibility to go to a concert. And, you know, I was feeling pretty run down yesterday and it's just, I had to say no. Um, even though that's something I enjoy, but it didn't make sense for last night. Hmm. Yeah, and and uh, um, Mark's quite a musician, and so right. this is a <laughs> this is an amazing time of the year for him. I mean, uh, the music flows through his veins, and so uh, this you know I bet it right now, and it, because so much of the church music is amazing right now, right? Right. So yeah. I much. mean, I I very much enjoy that, and for me, that is a way for me to decrease my stress. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm both involved in, I'm involved in my church with, with music and, and that has been a real de-stressor for me because that's how I can get rid of some of my stress because the only thing I can think about when I'm involved in music is that. Mm. I can't think about the myriad of things that are going on in the rest of my life in the holiday season and the busyness of all this. And so I think that's good, you know, not just, you know, for me that that's what works, but maybe for you it's to doing something totally different. Like, you know, I think creativity is super important and that we all are innately creative, but it's like, where does your creativity come out? And that can be a big de-stressor during this time. It's like maybe you like to paint or you like to do crafts. Crafts are great this time of year. And, you know, maybe making presents for people, that is a, a de-stressor for you. That's great. You're describing what some would call a flow state, right? A flow state of kind of getting into this space of like, wow, I'm paying so much attention to this that I have actually forgot thinking about myself and my current circumstances. You know, we, we talk a lot about, we do quantitative EEGs and brain mapping and things here. And and you can actually see in the brain that there are different networks. There's your attention network and your default network. And your default network is really holding that sense of self, like who am I, what am I, how am I? And, and that's what I think gets conflicted in stress states, right? Mm -hmm. Where something isn't fitting for me, like wasting how I understand myself to be isn't fitting with how the world is right now. And, and what's coming up around me and I don't feel safe. I don't feel nurtured. I don't feel supported. All of those are the default network searching the world to make sure that we're okay. And when we turn you know, so that, yeah, we want to deal directly with that. And we do that with things like neurofeedback, but we also want to deal with it by what you just said is a, giving our attention, turning on our attention network to something that is, brings us joy, getting into a flow state. And so what is that for you? What is, what is that thing that you lose time on? Because you're literally, when, by turning that intense attention on, you're giving this other part of your brain that is kind of the, the cognitive home of stress, a break. And then when you, when you stop doing that activity, then, oh, that cognitive home of stress can kind of come back online and it, it can, it's had a break. It's had some time off. And so you can report short through the challenges of family coming in and the challenges of, <laughs> of, of having, okay, navigating everybody's expectations and navigating your own internal dialogue, all that becomes easier when you've given it a break by getting into a flow state with maybe exercise, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you know, arts and crafts, you said, music, Cooking. I mean, you know, that's something that we both enjoy doing mm -hmm. and, and it's kind of a creative outlet. Um, and so that's, you know, it's just another example. And this is a time to cook, uh, you know, family time and coming together around food. And that's, that's uh, another place where, where that kind of can come out and you can focus all your energy, but you know, it's also can be a certain time <laughs> as well. Can I tell you how cooking kind of bit me and bit my stress? But <laughs> sure. so my mom, my sweet mom, 88 years old, and she found the recipe to my favorite cookies and sent me some from South Dakota. 
Hi, mom. If you're listening, I love you. <laughs> Those are amazing cookies. <laughs> but, but they weren't cookies that were actually the best for my immune system. And so, but man, when you get little packets of love from your mom, you're going, okay, I'm in. But, <laughs> but the rest of that day was very mentally, emotionally stressful for me because I don't do well with dairy. And, and, um, and, um, but, it, and I think that it's always, there's this compounding effect in the holidays because people are often bringing in a lot of extra sugar, right. eating things that often turn on your immune side of your stress system. Mm -hmm. And then that makes the mental emotional side even more challenged. So I had to give myself a little love. I had to say, all right, <clears throat> mm -hmm. I got to imbibe a little bit of mama's goodness and I'm a little bit irritable now <laughs> and I'm a little bit edgy. And, um, and unfortunately that the people around me had to, I had to inform them of that. And so, and then that got better, but, but understanding yourself and giving yourself some permission for giving yourself a little bit and, and recognizing that this is a dance of life. Mm -hmm. Things are going to come and go. Anyway, it's, it's, there's biologic sides to these things as well. And then that comes back to giving yourself permission to live. I mean, we, 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 want, we want everybody to live their best life possible, right? And that's going to be an ebb and flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, we're not, as you said, it's like giving yourself some grace. Um, you know, it, we're not going to do everything perfectly. And, and you are going to eat some things probably that you wouldn't normally eat during this, during this time of year. And that's, that's okay. But I think for me, it's like, I can't overdo it. If I overdo it, then I'm not going to feel good at all. And that does not put me in a good place. And you know, one of the things that stress does, whether the stress is coming from what we eat or the emotional stress, is that it really affects our immune system. This is the time of year where there's a lot of stuff going on as far as different viruses that are, that are hitting us. And, and I'm sure you've got friends and family who are all dealing with that, or maybe you are. Um, and it's like, okay, how do I take care of myself so that my immune system doesn't go down so that I'm going to catch all this stuff? Because mm -hmm. that kind of makes the holiday is a little more stressful if you're <laughs> sick during the holidays. Um, and, you know, another thing that, that you brought up is, is family stuff, because that can definitely be stressful and, and expectations. Um, you know, I think we all kind of have expectations of how things are going to go during the holidays. I had an expectation uh, during this holiday season that, that didn't turn out the way I thought. Um, one of the things that I learned, and this is, this is uh, props to my therapist, is that if you give yourself 72 hours after you have this stressor, that everything looks different. You know, the emotions calm down, your flight or fight systems calm down, and, and you're able to have a lot better perspective. Um, and actually, uh, because of this, I, I took advantage of my resources, which is I had access to my therapist. And I actually had a therapy session last week because I needed to just work through this, this family situation. And I came out feeling a lot better, a lot more calm. But by that, by the time I saw him, I already had 72 hours and I was already starting to feel better. So that was just a, a, a one of those wisdom things that I've been passed down to that's been passed down to me that that's been helpful in my life. Like things that don't go the way you expect and that it, it's super stressful and brings up a lot of emotions. Like mm -hmm. give it 72 hours. Things will look a lot different. Oh, yeah, that that's great. What that brings up for me is the power of awareness mm -hmm. because one of the great first steps as an antidote to stress is awareness of instead of being caught up in the <laughs> I was thought of thought of a time I was surfing uh, off of the coast of California and I got caught in um, what they call the, the, the washing machine or the spin cycle Ugh, and I got no I got thrown down and and I had no control whatsoever where my body was going to go. I had, there was no, I did not know if I was emerging out of that wave and uh, being tossed around and around and around and around. And, and that's a horrible feeling to have, feel like you're getting pulled and aware or pulled 
in a place that you can't go. And stress can feel that way. Mm -hmm. You can get into a vortex and, and it can really have that physical sensation, almost like being inside of that wave. And the first thing that they teach you as far as getting out of a wave like that is just become aware, become aware. Uh, don't fight the wave, but become aware. And, and it's not to do anything, but mm -hmm. become aware. And I think that's such a useful, that has been very useful in my own life to go, when I'm in a stressful circumstance, I have a, a family conflict. I have uh, a, a disappointment of you know somebody not showing up like they thought they were showing up. A disappointment in myself not showing up as I wanted to show up. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing is become aware and just sit, like you said, give yourself seventy-two hours and and go like, okay, I'm stressed, and be the observer of yourself because you you know there is there is that there is that person that there is that uh, person that's having the stress. And then interestingly enough, there's also a voice or a, an observer that's inside of you that is watching you have the stress, that's aware that you are stressed. And it's great to go to that space of being the observer and, and becoming aware of everything that's going on for a moment. Even as you're in the middle of that deeply stressful and challenging situation. And, uh, that can be such a gift then. Then stress can be your teacher. You know, we, we talk a lot about how your symptoms and your labs and everything that's maybe a challenge is really your teacher if you allow it to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, But if you're not aware, then you're just going to continue to be in that spin cycle and not find a natural way out of that and um, and go catch your next wave and surf life a little more <laughs> enjoyably again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've definitely found that, and this has taken me a while to get to this place, but I guess that's the the gift of age, is, is that when we find ourselves in these challenging situations, uh, and, and I think that they tend to be exponentially uh, happening at a rapid rate, I think, during the holidays, is that there is always something to learn on the other side of a challenging situation. Mm -hmm. And, and I what, I've, what I've found is that kind of going to that observer state is like, okay, here I am in an in, in emotionally or whatever kind of stressful situation. Okay, I know from my past experiences that I'm actually learn something and gain some wisdom out of what's going on right now. And it, that really helps give me perspective like, okay, even though we, we tend to want to think of things in black and white, good and bad. And it's like, okay, I may be thinking of this as a bad situation, but yet there's always this good on the other side. And so it, it changes my perspective as far as the current situation. It's like, okay, this is a learning opportunity for me, which is cool. And, and it's, it's not always super comfortable, but it makes it in a way more comfortable, being comfortable in the uncomfortable. Um, so that's that's something that, that I've learned over time and, and it does tend to come up more during the holidays. Um, yeah. Something else that comes up during the holidays for a lot of people is, is grief and loss. Mm. Um, mm. You, either there's something that is an anniversary of, a, of grief or loss or there's somebody that's no longer with you during the holidays. And that's, that's really tough for people. And I think that's part of the reason why there tends to be more depression during the holidays for a lot of people. But one of the things that I have found with, with both myself and my patients is we need to honor that loss and grieve that loss. Um, I've, I've found that, that grief that is not expressed and actually allowing yourself to go through that grief causes a lot of stress on the body. Because we, we internalize it and then you know there's there's this this book called the body keeps the score which i'm sure a lot of you have, have heard of and it's like our body hangs on to that stress and then it can come out in all sorts of physical ways mm -hmm. um, and that that can be really devastating to our bodies um, but but honor that that grief that loss you know it's okay to cry during the holidays 
you need that time and space to go do that. So, um, and, and really, a grief is grief is the process of the emotion of loss, mm -hmm. and 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 when we lose something um, and experience that sadness, that often becomes the raw material for deeper compassion, for yeah, more profound capacity to love. Um, you know, the people that we, you know, and you're probably one of them who has experienced incredible loss and heartache. Um, if you look back, that has tendered your spirit, that has probably made you, you know, a better human. And, and that's, it's a hard thing that we go through, you know, the, this forging of a soul mm -hmm. that goes on through the course of our life is not something that is, uh, easy, uh, uh, but wow, is it, can it be beautiful? And I think that, you know, I go back to this default network, you know, that grief kind of lives in that default network, this sense of who we are. And when we lose something, we kind of have to change our, our neurologic representation of that. We have to change how we are wired to shift a, and develop a new definition of ourself. And changing our mind is actually a physical activity. Mm -hmm. It's a physical activity. We have to grow new synapses. We have to make new connections. We pull back others. And so the healthier the tissue of the brain is, the more people can adapt to grief. I often wonder about this, that because we see some really vibrant, healthy bodies come through the clinic that are very old. And I've always been amazed how well they adapt grief. Mm -hmm. So even, yeah. even if their relationship was profound and their loss from the outside is terrible, if they're biologically healthy, they're able to adapt better. If they're biologically unhealthy, they have a much harder time dealing with grief. So <clears throat> when grief is lingering, it's important to think of the body mind. It is important to think of ourselves as a true holistic being that everything matters towards our ex our expression and our experience of life mm -hmm. and um so if you if you also if you find i think what's challenging about the holidays is not only just those the what we experience ourselves but what we see our family experiencing yeah and a lot of people are going to go home and see family members that are stressed out depressed anxious are losing their memory. Wow, mm. the number of people that call into our clinic after the holidays about their family members who are losing their memory spikes incredibly uh, because you know, people that haven't been around each other for a while mm -hmm. show up. And now, now this stress of, okay, now what am I gonna do? Mom is really starting to slip here. Uh, what, are, what are we gonna do about this um, or, or I don't want to be in that same situation. I see my parents going through, what am I going to do about this? And stress can cause us to act. So in that, in that way as well, we can be with the stress and then it can also cause us to seek out different solutions. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I think that's a good point about um, when we've got something that's pushing on us, like how do we, how do we respond to that? We respond constructively and say, hey, listen, maybe there is something that we can do about mom's memory. Um, you know, and fortunately, here at Maxwell Clinic, we have a lot to offer for those kind of things. Um, and, you know, but, but yeah, being constructive with the stress that does come along uh, is important. Um, and, you know, during this time, it's, it's good to know yourself and to respond accordingly, you know, like you're an extrovert. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, so an extrovert, what do they do? They get their, their refill from being with people. So like for you, it's important that you don't isolate and, you know, it's very natural for you to be with people. But an introvert, like they need their time to be alone at times during the holidays. I think for, for introverts, this time of year is probably more difficult because it's harder probably to be alone. You don't want to isolate, but sometimes you're being pulled and everything's all about social activities and stuff. And, and maybe if, you're, if you know that you're an introvert and you need your alone time, 
that it's like, okay, I need to, I need to have a little break to, to give myself the recharge that I need and not go constantly and being, you know, at parties all the time and stuff, because that, that'll wear you down. And when our bodies get worn down, there's all sorts of things that can go wrong. Um, yeah, you know, I've, I've found that, you know, talking about chronic stress, uh, I've gotten, I've had an interest, um, especially this year in long COVID. Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed is there is this recurring theme with long COVID of people who are under massive amounts of stress, maybe not dealing with it very well for long periods of time, before they got COVID. And then yep. Yep. Once, yep. once they have COVID, they're much more likely to end up with long-term effects of COVID. Mm -hmm. And um, so, it, you know, we, we burn our candles at both ends. Um, it's hard on, on our adrenal glands. So our adrenal glands um, are, they, they are kind of like a gland that helps support us during stress, but they can only do so much when we're kind of pounding at them all the time and we're massively stressed out all the time, they were out. And actually that's something that was found in a study uh, earlier this year that patients with long COVID, their adrenal glands are just wiped out. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, the, when you say, when we say stress, isn't it interesting? I wonder how many definitions of stress are in people's minds right now mm -hmm. as we say that, because the experience thereof, is is and we we've I've noticed we've shifted we've used stress many different ways because stress is is just in many ways the load upon our system mm -hmm. how much load the the load that is against our functioning right sometimes people call, we call it allostatic load which literally means um, the 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 always present um, adverse load on us and so it's not just the mental emotional stuff but like you said the when you have long time maybe sleep deprivation mm -hmm. uh, you have maybe a poor nutritional status maybe you have chronic infections toxin buildup all of those are part of your allostatic load it's like your bucket fills up mm -hmm. and 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 then along comes covid and you've had a pretty full bucket already yep. and then that covid Cause the bucket to runneth over, mm -hmm. and then COVID kind of gets all the blame. That, right. Oh, oh, it's all the COVID. But, but it was all this mm -hmm. stuff leading up to it. And if you want, yeah. because if you really want to get to the want to get people well, you have to go back to the bucket. Yeah, exactly. Back yeah. to the bucket. Let's 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 dump the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's it, and it creates biological trash. And, and when we have too much biological trash and our bodies just don't have the ability to clean that up, mm -hmm. then, then we're in trouble. Yeah. Um, and we, we just want to live in a state where we're, we're able to empty that trash mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and live a full life, live a whole life. Um, and and being, being mindful of the different parts of our life that can kind of get out of balance. Yeah. I don't know if there's a whole lot else we need to say. How are we doing on time? We're about right on time. Yeah. Um, the, I want to just come back to asserting what we said from the beginning, that you're, you have tremendous potential for living a vibrant life. Yeah. And stress, the, the sensations of stress are really important for us to uh, honor, right? You have to honor the, these sensations. Be, be aware. Ask your body, what's it teaching you? Mm -hmm. What's going on here? Ask yourself, well, how could I be better nourished? What load could I let go of at this time? What, what help could I reach out for? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we both love our therapist. Yes. Okay. You know, and, <laughs> and I think that, that having somebody confidential that you can speak to to work through those things that are eroding you in your, in your mind space. I think that's an incredible uh, tool to use. Now, um, if you're stuck, you know, um, there's many ways to get unstuckified, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. And uh, ketamine, actually, I'll bring that up. Right. Because, you know, the, we had a, um, 
a patient of mine that we, we were talking about preparing for this talk. And it brought up for me um, how triggering the holidays can be for a lot of people. And um, one of the patients that most grieved to me in my early career was a dear woman who went into horrible panic and anxiety around every holiday season. As soon as the holiday season started, she was just like a cat on a hot tin roof and distressed and anxious and, and um, had to be psychiatrically hospitalized a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as New Year's would hit, boom, she was back to her old self again. Wow. And, and it was a very, very distressing thing. She came to me after that had gone on many times and we talked about it. And um, I actually get down to the fact that she recognized that Christmas trees, uh, these, this, this thing that gives us a, a meme, right? Mm -hmm. Of a memory of, of triggering. Uh, she had a very traumatic experience that has happened as a young girl around a Christmas tree. Mm. So Christmas lights and Christmas trees and things like that would throw her into a really severe place. And we were able to get there by asking the question, mm -hmm. okay, what does this mean to you? Being aware of that. And oh, do I wish I had ketamine available for her at that time. Yeah. Because the ability for her to be able to get out of that depressive loop, I think could have been, um, could have been helped a lot. Um, therapy, then she was able to start down that therapeutic path. But, and, and, and um, um, you know, it's, uh, we never know what people are carrying. That is very we true. We never know. Yeah. And nobody knows what you're carrying either. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unless you talk about it. Or at least you're, unless you're open to what's going on inside yourself and exploring that, exploring the things that are hidden. So if you're having stress, um, maybe consider inviting that feeling in as a gift. And consider inviting that in as, oh, my body is trying to tell me something, that something, my load is too high here. I, I, I need to unload something or I need to draw in a new resources of biological resources, of nutrition, of sleep, of of maybe I need to kick somebody out of my, my circle. Yeah. Maybe I need to detox a relationship, <laughs> right. you know, um, maybe I need to, maybe I need to build some new healthier relationships. So, yeah. so, and, and I think this is a opportunity for people to become aware and to listen to their own body's wisdom as they are on this journey of life. Yeah. You know, and I think that's, that's a good kind of way to wrap up is to think of, the holidays have many gifts, and I think there's, there's mm. obvious gifts, um, including the presents that we give each other. But the, you know, the gifts of just the holiday season and, and being, you know, having friends and family around and, and people that, like I've got a couple of friends that I get to go see out in California, which is where I grew up, that I haven't seen in a long time, which I'm, that's a gift to me. But also that the stress is a gift because in our awareness, mm we can learn things and and actually grow as a result and that that's a gift um we don't always think of it that way but stepping back giving yourself some perspective that's a that's a true gift and we get we get more of, of that opportunity during this stressful time yeah awesome well dr Licky, mark Thank you for your presence today. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your presence as well. Exactly. And I think I, I uh, give the gift of presence uh, this holiday season to your friends and family. Probably the most important present that is ever given. Uh, certainly the one I like to receive the most. Yeah. So. All right. Well, thanks for joining us uh, and happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.